Okay, uh, this question was actually on uh, uh, a physics GRE. And uh, usually when a question is on the GRE, and if it's taking you too long to do it and getting you into some complicated math, uh, most likely you're on the wrong path and most likely there's a quicker way to do the question. Um, because they expect you to do questions in a very short period of time so the minute you start uh, getting yourselves deep into integrals and spherical harmonics and weird functions uh, try to think of a different quick way to do the problem so let's take a look two spherical non-conducting and very thin shells of uniformly distributed positive charge and radius d are located a distance d from each other so we have two shells and then so so that means uh, if, if there's a shell and the charge is distributed on it uh, if you apply Gauss's law let's let's continue read the question then we'll discuss it and then you place a charge small q inside one of the shells distance d over 2 from its center on the line connecting the centers okay of the two shells uh, note the word connecting the centers because had it not been connecting the centers the problem would probably take much longer and hence would probably not be on a GRE exam okay uh, as shown in the figure what's the net force on charge Q okay so the easier way to think about this problem is to think of electric fields and then once you know what your electric field at charge Q is you could easily get the elect you could get the electric force right because uh, of the uh, similar because uh, you know the electric field is just force per unit charge so we know that f equals q in general q e if this works Okay, uh, now uh, notice that if you quickly look at the shell on the left and you do and you apply Gauss's law, since this charge Q is actually distributed on the surface, so it's not anywhere um, inside. And if you uh, draw a, I don't know why my thing is not working, I apologize, my colors. Oh, this is frustrating me. Okay, hopefully the colors are working now. So yeah, I meant to make this capital Q in general. Okay, so if I were to apply, to draw a quick Gaussian surface at where I'm evaluating the electric field at point Q, uh, uh, notice that there is no charge enclosed in that red shell. And therefore, the electric field contribution from this charge would be zero okay so this is el from the left hand side uh, it's gonna be uh, zero since q enclosed q enclosed in that red shell equals zero and therefore e would equal zero right el would equal zero okay so we are left with the right shell so let's use this color on the right shell and on the right shell uh, if if I am 10 D away uh, and it's D over 2 from the center most likely the dis so the distance between remember an electric field from a sphere that is very far away it's 10 times the distance this is 10 D and the radius is D so uh, we can safely say that 10 D is a lot bigger than D it looks like a, uh, a point charge located at the center okay at any point here so for example if I were to draw uh, a Gaussian surface here right around this I know I'm enclosing capital Q my Q enclosed that's coming from the right shell Q enclosed would equal Q correct and therefore if I apply Gauss's law quickly I would get E 
dot da equals q enclosed over epsilon and uh, I know that this is radial and uh, the area is also pointing in the radial direction so I can take the E out and uh, the area of that sphere is just um, uh, so this becomes EA equals Q enclosed over epsilon right and Q enclosed is Q so this will be Q over 4 pi epsilon the area of that sphere is 4 pi epsilon right and then what's the distance the distance is it's 4 pi the radius of, of the of the blue sphere that I drew square so this would be 10 D minus uh, D over 2 because center to center is 10 D but the uh, small Q charge is placed D over 2 to the right of the center so I would have to subtract them D over 2 squared right so that is uh, that is the electric field okay so if we simplify here we get Q over uh, I think I push this in 10 minus half and then square that we get 4 pi epsilon 361 over 4 d squared these four cancel out and once I have the electric field this is the magnitude of the electric field I can simply now find F net right uh, will equal what will equal now uh, 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 magnitude wise I'm talking about magnitude I'll come back to the vectors in a second so this would just be equal to uh, Q so we just multiply by the charge of the current because we because this force because this electric field uh, is as a result of the charge distribution capital Q uh, which will will uh, which will push through by a force on small Q by a magnitude of this much the four cancels the four and we get four by epsilon uh, sorry the four went away so we get 361 by epsilon d squared now the question is what is the direction of this force now notice that uh, uh, you have you have a sphere let me try to duplicate this here and on the center there is a Q right now if you are to take a small piece here right and those have assuming the same charge right uh, there is gonna be a force away from this piece on this charge so there's going to be a force going down this way correct but however due to the symmetry of the sphere there's another piece right on the other side of the axis that I drew that's going in the center of the sphere there's another force that is doing the same thing yeah and so uh, if if I were so, so what that means is uh, this is F1 and this is F2 notice that the uh, if we call this the Z axis the Z components will cancel out F1Z equal F2Z in magnitude right and equal negative so so the, the so the Z component will cross out because one points up one points down and by the same exact argument right if I take a piece here this will push out of the page right this will push out of the page and another piece here on the sphere towards the front portion of the sphere this will pull into the page and uh, if we call this axis here let's label this differently if this is the x-axis the x components will also cancel each other out right at every point on the sphere and uh, the only thing I'm left with notice uh, that the only thing I'm left with is the Z component uh, the Z components on the sphere survive and uh, sorry uh, not the Z I meant the Y right if, if we call this the Y uh, all these components will add up and they will add up to the left because if you draw the component chart diagram for each one of these forces this points left and F2 points left as well and so that means this force will point left okay left of the page that is the direction of the force
Okay, so that means uh, this would be our answer. Uh, magnitude is here. And the direction obviously is to the left. And that concludes this question.